Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have some hearth and hand with magnolia DIYs. Yes, three budget friendly DIYs that are inspired by Chip and Joanna's line. So let's get started and a word of caution, I say in my opinion in this video a lot. Just saying. First DIY, I'm going to be using this IKEA frame. It's what I had on hand. You could pick up a frame at the Dollar Tree for a buck they have a wonderful selection. Taking a ruler, I make marks at the top of my frame. I go in about an inch on both sides and that's where I'm going to put my screws. Now from this Dollar Tree picture hanging kit, I'm going to be using the screws that are called eye screws. I take a wrench to clamp them and then I take a lighter. No, I'm not gonna smoke and yes, I'm going to light the screw on fire. I use this technique to make pilot holes in the frame. In my opinion, it's easier than using a hammer and a small nail to make these holes and potentially cracking the frame. It works like a charm, it's easy for me, and I like easy. Once your holes are made, you insert your screws on both sides. A few dabs of black acrylic paint to match the frame. And while that's drying, I grab this plant hanger from the Dollar Tree I figure out how long I want my chain to be and then I open up one of the links and I attach it to the hook on my frame. And after I did both sides, I didn't like the way one side came out. See how they all go in the same direction? So when you get to the other side, that link happens to be upside down. So to make this work, I had a Dollar Tree hanging basket laying around that I wasn't using. I removed one of the links and then used that to attach my chain to my frame. For the inside of my frame, I wanted a picture of the world map. So I just went on Google Images, found a picture I liked, printed it out to fit the frame. And here it is. I put it up in my entryway. I think it's adorable. I love the chain, makes it look super like industrial, and it really looks like the original, in my opinion. Target's price, $19.99. My cost, a dollar if you figure in the frame, which I didn't have to buy, and less than a dollar for the chain because I only used one. Free picture from the internet, and I call this a win, coming in at under $2. I love it. For my next DIY, I'm going to take this sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to remove the inside part, the part that rotates, and just pull it out. Then using my Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint, I give this three coats of paint. These Dollar Tree wood beads, they come in a pack of 70. I'm only going to take two and I'm going to paint them white as well. Now taking the skewer, also from the Dollar Tree, I think it's 32 inches. I'm going to cut two pieces at six and a quarter inches each. Using that same skewer, because it's so long, I cut four pieces that are three inches in length. I give them all a light sanding on both sides just to make sure that they're all flat. Gorilla wood glue, an L-shaped ruler from the Dollar Tree to make everything straight, and I glue the two three inch pieces to the six and a half inch piece in a C-shape, and I do this twice. Now once they're completely dry, I'm going to join them, and I'm going to basically make a triangle shape. You'll see what I'm doing. It's easier for you to see it than for me to say it, but I'm gonna join them just like I'm doing here, and then do the other side as well. I add some more wood glue to the top of the triangles and then I put it to the side to dry. This piece of metal is from a Dollar Tree wreath and I just cut two very small pieces, I don't know, maybe like a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the holes of this sign. Once you paint the sign, the holes do get clogged up a little with paint. All I did was tap it on the table a little by pressing and it went right in. Once my base is dry, I go over it with one coat of black acrylic paint. Now I go back to my sign while that's drying and taking a ruler, I draw a rectangle, like a little box inside the frame. Truth be told, I'm getting older and even making a straight line is becoming a struggle. 
Anyway, I go over that line with a magic marker. I didn't want to use paint because, again, it would probably be all over the place. Taking the same marker, I go all the way around the edge of the sign. Jesus, take the wheel. It's time to write. And I could have used my Cricut, but I wanted this sign to be a little bit more organic. My handwriting stinks. It is what it is. Looks crooked to me, but we're going to go with it anyway. I write over the pencil with a magic marker. Now that my base is dry, I take the wood beads and some push pins that I got from Dollar Tree. I got them in black in that office kit set that I hauled a while back, and I'm going to use a little dab of hot glue and attach my wood bead to the top part of the triangle. Small amount of hot glue on the flat part of the push pin and also the metal, and I'm going to push it through the top part of the triangle in through the hole of the bead. Did the same thing to the other side and now we're ready to hang our sign. Put the metal piece through the wood bead and do the same for the other side by separating it very carefully so that this thing doesn't fall apart and push both sides in. I put this sign in my entryway. I love the way it looks. It's so adorable. And the original was $14.99. I wasn't going to pay $14.99 for a little quirky sign like this. Sorry, Chip and Joe. You know I love you, but uh-uh. It's smaller than the original. My handwriting isn't the best, but for 50 cents, it's all good. I love that it's reversible, but I'm going to be leaving it mostly on the let's stay inside. Yep, I'm a homebody. For my final DIY, I wanted to try and recreate Chip and Joanna's wooden crate. It's discontinued on their site, but other sites were selling it for a lot more. So a while back, I bought a few wooden crates to make a table that never came to fruition, and I got these for $10 at Michael's. Using my Art Minds antique wax and a brush, I apply the wax directly to the crate. Now this was my first time applying wax on a piece that I haven't chalk painted first, so I really didn't know what results I would get. I chose the wax because I was doing this indoors and didn't want to expose myself, my cat, even Peter Parker, to the fumes of the wood stain, so this option was truly the best. For the areas where the slats meet, I use a small brush and apply the wax that way just to ensure complete coverage. Now while I set that to the side to dry, I go over to my Cricut software and I print out the word Magnolia and Established and the year and all of that in a font that's called Aquifer. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. But it's a font that mimics the Magnolia branding and I found it online. Now using Dollar Tree clear contact paper, I prepare my vinyl decal. I love using the clear contact paper from Dollar Tree. It's super affordable. In my opinion, it works just as well as the expensive Cricut brand. So after using a ruler to make sure that this is centered, I peel the transfer tape away from the paper backing and apply my vinyl onto the crate. And this is how it turned out. I put it underneath that thing that I picked up at the Stormville Flea Market and that I will be turning into a bench soon. I am in love with this crate. I can't believe how easy it was to make. Even if you don't have a Cricut, you could still use the Dollar Tree peel and stick letters, and I think it would still look fabulous. Easy project, super affordable, and in my humble opinion, I think it looks a lot like the original. I really hope you all enjoyed this week's video, these hearth and hand and magnolia inspired DIYs. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I'll see you next time guys.